Three, two, one. Hi, Internet friend. This is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show. And I've got Carnella Ajassin. Is that how I, is that how you say, say it? Yes, it is. Yes, Jackson. thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good. You're in Atlanta. You said it's kind of warm down there. I'm up in Minnesota and it's cold. <laughs> You've got that stereotype. It's not always really cold here. I remember I did a Meeting Professionals International event here where they're coming from all over the world. And it was in August, and it was like 90-something above. And they brought jackets because they they thought Minnesota was going to be so cold. It's not always that cold here. Mm -hmm. so how okay, it's it's it always hot, it's hot here most of the time, and especially in the summertime. But, yeah. But you like it, right? I do. I love it. You guys can't handle the winters, though. I remember I was living in Asheville, <laughs> North Carolina. They had a storm, and it's like, <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. We're the laughing stock of the world. <laughs> well, I don't know. I remember I used to vacation in Jamaica and we were trying to explain to them that in Minnesota the lakes freeze over and people actually walk out on the lake and cut a hole in the ice and they fish. And they says, No man, that can't be right, man. <laughs> they did not believe it. <laughs> so how long have you lived in Atlanta? Uh, since 1999. Okay, deep roots. Yeah. Originally from Philadelphia, outside of Philadelphia. I don't detect much of an accent. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you have to combat that and not get that accent? No. Uh, it just it's never it up. <laughs> never happened. <laughs> really? Yeah. My wife tells me that sometimes I got a Minnesota accent. <laughs> You remember that well, that's movie? Not so bad. Remember the movie Fargo? Yes, I do. I that, do. That I branded, love that movie. The branded Minnesotan says talking like that for Christ's sakes, but you know what? Fargo's in the Dakotas. It's not in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Is it North Dakota? Yeah. It's not yeah. Even, it's not even Minnesota. But that's right. That's right. <laughs> the funniest things. Yeah. So you married and got kids and all that kind of stuff? No, I'm divorced and I have two kids, a, a, a daughter 18, a son that's 15. Okay, that, that perfect age where they're just getting their independence and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have any, but, but I'm a spectator. I watch and observe. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your uh, business and what your company does. Sure. So again, we uh, primarily um, work in the... Um, really in the Fortune 500 company, company space, startup ecosystem, and helping them to develop mobile applications, software applications, and hardware. Um, we pride ourselves in helping clients to, um, the, the work that we do with them is more like a co-creator. We help them to co-create their ideas, make their ideas realized. Uh, and then we also help them with capital. Uh, and then from there, really help them to, um, expand their community in terms of the, the startup world. Um, because most times with startup companies in general, even if they are funded already, um, you know, just working in the space, finding um, additional uh, resources for funding is, is sometimes difficult to do. Um, so we help them with that as well. Well, that sounds uh, like a, a sort of a match made in heaven kind of thing, because you can have a good idea and then you go out and you go raise some funds and all of a sudden you run out of money and that destroys a lot of ideas. So in the yes. front end of it, you can kind of say, no, we're going to need more than a quarter million. <laughs> yeah, that's why we actually started the, the, um, the, the private equity, the fund portion of the, of the business is because uh, a lot of times I noticed that clients would come to us and they would have some great ideas and we would help them to come up with their MVPs with their prototype. Um, they would go out and, and seek funding and then sometimes they wouldn't get funding at all. Do you so, ever get people that kind of say, well, of course you're helping raise funds. You're going to get the money. Do they kind of get a little, think there's a little bias there when you're raising the funds? Uh, no, because we don't, we don't, we only fund or work with companies in terms of the financial piece of, of capital side of things. If we really, really believe in the product and it's just something that's, that will be, a, uh, have a unique place in our portfolio. Uh, we're very selective in that, in that regard. Um, we do also uh, refer people to other um, VCs and equity firms um, because it, not every 
portfolio fits what we're what we're looking for to be to be to really make our our portfolio as diverse and have different types of technologies as we like we're interested in doing. So it's not a you know a, it's it's very selective. We just we just don't fund everybody. We don't have the we don't have the kind of capital first of all, and right. second of all, we have to be very selective about who we choose. So just to get the so I'm a little more clear and the audience is a little more clear. Like say there was a company like. Well, it's like Uber, and this is before they even launched. Or, or I'll, I'll use a real situation. There's a company here in Minneapolis, because in Minnesota, there's a lot of lakes, and there's the Lake Minnetonka. It's a big lake, and they came up with uh, a, an app. That, I think it's called Float, so that when a person's, you know, they got their boat at the dock, but no one's using it, you can log on and you can use the boat, and it comes with a captain or without a captain. So you, if someone had an idea like that, you can say, mm -hmm. okay, this is how you do that. This is how much it's going to cost. Here's where we can get the money. You kind of take it right from ground grassroots. Yeah. So, so what we would do is, like you said, we would help them to finesse the idea first. Uh, if the idea needs to be finessed, we do some research around that to make sure we have a good market fit, make sure we know who the target audience is going to be, um, make sure that we have some viable opportunities for the app to, to be successful. Uh, then we help with um, making sure that we assess more of our customer discovery. Uh, and then we have to move into the next phase, which is more of the, um, the road mapping phase where we look at the design, uh, we look at the actual, and then start building a prototype, how what the user experience is going to be like for the users who are using the particular app. Uh, and then from there, we move into prototyping it out. Um, the app, wow. Part of prototyping is a, is a matter of also getting it in front of real customers who potentially will be using that testing that prototype with those customers, getting that feedback, evaluating that feedback to make sure that, um, you know, second rounds or when we actually do the MVP, that, that the feedback is actually part of the, the development of that. Um, because, you know, user feedback is very, is very um, important. It's like vitamins. It really helps to um, really um, set the direction as to if you're on the right track in terms of what the user experience is like or how, how people expect to be using the application. Um, so then we move on to, um, building it out from there in terms of an MVP. Um, once you have an MVP, I, I'm, I'm not really uh, big on suggesting that people go straight out and start raising capital. Um, I think they should, and we often advise them not to do that. We advise them to work on um, building customer acquisitions on their own, you know, mm -hmm. organically. Try to get some customers on your own, at least 1,000 to 2,000 users um, before going after VC or, or angel or private equity funding. Um, it's, it's, you have a stronger case when you can say that we have, um, you know, market fit and we also have a proven concept uh, such that, because there's nothing proves your concept more than somebody you know, 1,000, 2,000 people haven't paid already for the services. <laughs> so right. you can't dispute you know, income coming in. So that's what we really recommend. It sounds like you guys really thought this through because it, uh, I mean, I don't even get into this kind of space. So usually it's, uh, I, I have an idea and I implement it myself, but it's, I see a lot of the issues that a person could have because I've had ideas. They sound like a great idea. And then I just go forward on them. If I would have had someone like you to talk to and have you say, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Especially before you go, here's my great idea. Yeah. Thanks for the million dollars, and then it doesn't work. They're going to want their yeah. money back. <laughs> yeah, you know, because that's the thing, right? So nobody has time to, to waste, um, you know, time, money, resources, um, energy, you know, into to an idea. So it's really best to, um, you know, have someone to help you, to guide you as around your, that's why we say co-creation. You know, we help to co-create, manifest, realize your idea. So, you know, and help to do that, we, we have to go through, you know, is this idea even viable to begin with? So that's step one, right? Um, because there's no need to move further if, the, if, if, we, if we can invalidate the idea or if we can take the idea of, or a rough idea and then maybe uh, ideate around something that can be more tangible than maybe the original idea. You know, so sometimes that's also a viable option as well. And some people, I was talking to um, a potential client just yesterday <laughs> on a Sunday and she called me and was like, you know, she had a great idea. But um, when I talked to her about the, our process and then I talked to her about the evaluation process, even after she gets her product out in the market space, that it's going to be the users who are going to help you to shape the idea and make it expanded. And she didn't like the idea at all. 
Like, why would they help me to expand my idea when I had the idea? Like, okay, great, you have an idea, but you know, when you look at Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Zoom, they didn't, they don't look, they didn't look anything like they look today when they first came out, right? It, it took you, me, and other, all the other people out here that was, that were giving them comments, feedback, you know, complaints even to help them, you know, to come, come to where they are today in terms of our usability, functionality. So those things are, are actually value add and, and you shouldn't um, not be afraid of. Uh, feedback and, and comments. So you probably talked to a lot of people throughout the year. Like, what percentage of the people that come to you with ideas where you kind of just say, nah, versus the go getters? Is it like the, the, 80, the 20 80 principle? <laughs> what 80% is? Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, I would say so because, you know, you know, that's the thing, you know, when people have ideas, a lot of times they're not willing to invest the time to really vet the idea, make sure the idea is sound, or even test the idea with real people. It's like, I have an idea, I'm going to go for it. And it's funny because a lot of my male clients, um, they're kind of like that, like, I don't need to learn anything, I'm just going to go out there and go for it. Whereas a lot of my female clients, women clients are like, well, I got to get a PhD. I got to get a you know, master's. And it's like, you don't have to do all that. Or they, they, they just, you know, research upon research upon research upon research. And then while they're doing that, they notice that other people have already launched, you know, and they're like, oh, well, I can't do it anymore because this person's already done it. And that person's already done it. It's like where my male clients are like, I don't care if somebody else has already done it. I'm, they, I'm going to do it. You know, and it's like, what, so what's the difference? Like, what's going on there from a, from a, you know, from the gender perspective, you know, for me, it's like, that's a very interesting thing to ponder. Like, why is it that, you know, some of the women are more apprehensive about just going for it, you know, no matter what. And our male clients are, 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 are less apprehensive. And so I've kind of taken the mission to really just to advocate for women be more, you know, you know, just going for it as opposed to just being more apprehensive. I got to have the research and the validation and all this stuff. So, yeah, so it's usually the, the 80 20 rule in, 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 in some respects because, um, you know, even though someone may have a gusto to go for it, that doesn't always mean that their idea is not um, viable in, in, the, in the framework of which they're trying to go after. So, they should probably just take some time first, take a couple steps back before taking a few steps forward. It's interesting because I've got, I got this Gemini brain that sort of toggles between the, the male and the female energy all the time. I'm kind of like a, just a <laughs> go <Lucky> you. <laughs> it's a blessing yeah. and a curse kind of thing. And yeah. like you, you see my little sign back here, the magic lounge it might be backwards for you. Yeah, sure. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's an idea that I had. It's a, like a mobile sort of a comedy club, but it's only, it's magicians that perform. That's, that's where the magic Brad thing comes from because I'm doing the magic. <laughs> I, I, th yeah. I thought it was a great idea and I thought all the other magicians would definitely support it. And we were doing crew uh, dinner and a show on the Mississippi river with the cruises and stuff. And I just didn't get the support and I still cannot really figure out why, but there's probably a female element to it that should, should come into it that, that adds the sizzle to the steak, so to speak, that I have not really implemented. Maybe that's why it just hasn't, gotten roots you know huh, you got to have yeah. both of them kind of things because i yeah. see how uh, the female would be a little, little way well, i don't know if i want to invest in this thing but they got a really good idea and they're excited about it and they're passionate right. and they're emotional and the mental the my the male brain's going that ain't gonna work because the margin's not big enough and the audience isn't <laughs> big enough they get to the analytical part of it so yep, i crunch right. the numbers on the magic lounge it makes total sense but it's a whole different story of getting people off their butt and onto the boat yeah yeah it usually is right i mean you, you really do need the both you need both sides of the coin to really make it successful yeah and you also um, need people like you to i've got this great idea i'm really passionate about it heck i've already got the money i'm just going to invest it i'll just take it out of my retirement this will make it go and they need someone like yeah. you that can go hey let's come back yeah. down to earth yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's funny because um you know i i had a, a client last year and he, he, he got mad at me because uh, initially he got a little upset with me because he said, I've never heard anybody who talks someone out of giving them money. Um, so, because I don't want you to waste your money, um, you know, on, like you said, he took money out of his retirement. Um, and I thought that that was just really risky. Um, so I felt like, okay, before you do that, let's test this prototype out with 
yeah. some users first. Um, no, no development, no, you know, and he's like, why not? We need to start developing this thing. We need to get it out there. No, we're going to get out there in a prototyping form, test that with users to, so you can validate it just if you're on the right track. Well, that's kind of the nice thing in, in the world I'm working in now, the digital, you know, for creating digital products and things. You can kind of test to see if anybody cares and if they yes. like the blue button versus the red button and that's right. find out if it's going to work before you yeah. really dive into it. Whereas yeah. with a physical product, you got to kind of, you know, make a couple of them. That's going to cost some money to do that kind of thing. Yeah, but you can still prototype it out. You can still prototype it out and um, you can, you know, you can have them even play around with your test with your sample um, and that can give you some good insight and data. Um, but the point is, you know, make sure that you're doing that as opposed to making assumptions that you have to, you know, spend all this money um, before, um, f before getting real concrete do you, data. Do you provide like a service too of like someone that would go on the street with a clipboard and ask questions and do some surveying? No, mm -hmm. I typically use, um, we use applications called um, uh, test, usertester.com or userlytics or we use already tools that are already out there on the market. That makes sense. And, yeah. I, I was thinking back before the internet that you used a clipboard. <laughs> <What am laughs> right, I, yeah. These days. Well, it, it's a clipboard of sorts, so it's still. Survey monkey or something. Is, yeah, in some cases we do use SurveyMonkey, but it's, it's typically, you know, user analytics or something like that because they're really, really, they have a really solid program and a really solid um, product where we can just put different scenarios out there and then people are testing from all over the globe. You can decide who and what your demographic is going to be. Uh, you can pretty much outline that and then those, uh, the, the, some of the, the uh, testing results come back within 24 hours. So. You really have, a, it depends on what, you, what you're looking for, but it's a really good tool and um, that's what we use typically. So, so how long have you personally been doing this? Wow, I've been doing this, um, even before I graduated from college, I actually did this when I was in college. Um, I worked for a law firm when I started out when I was a sophomore in college. Uh, and the law firm, uh, he had some, you know, tons of files and, and uh, I said, I can build a, a database system for you. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. So I, I had a class and building database systems. And um, I just, you know, as I was learning it, I started applying it to his office. So um, just started doing that um, from, from there. Um, and um, then, you know, after I graduated, started working, but this was back in the, nine, um, in the 90s, so um, the late 90s. So yeah, I've been doing this for a very long time. Well, you'll be glad to know that it shows. You seem to have the answers for every question that I throw out there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So. If people want to know more about this, they got an idea and they want to have something developed, how do they get a hold of you? That's that sure. million dollar question. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So again, the, the company name is Mind Catalyst and that's with a K. So that's M-I-N-D-K-A-T-A-L-Y-S-T uh, dot com. Uh, we're on uh, LinkedIn. We're on the um, Twitter. We're on Instagram. Um, and they can also reach out to me via um, our website. Um, we also have, uh, I do a lot of blog posts as it relates to building products, investment, um, design, technology, emerging technologies. So, um, you know, really to just expand people's knowledge about, you know, the space and, you know, information they're looking for in terms of ideating around ideas. Uh, we look for those kind of things as well. Um, they could also send me a, a message and I'd be happy to set up a consultation with them and we can kind of chat through their idea. Of course, I would have them, they would have me sign an NDA first. Um, they should do that as a practice in general before they talk to anybody about their idea. Uh, even if it is just a, just a kind of a you know, whimsical idea, it doesn't matter. You really should sign an NDA um, so that people can, you know, you can protect your idea and protect that from. Yep, I've uh, had situations NDA. like that before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you just never know. <laughs> You can end up like Facebook. Who knows? Well, I like to keep these kind of short so people can consume the whole thing. And then what I do is I beam it up to YouTube and then propagate it out on social media. Okay. And where the synergy part comes in, if you could help with that too and get that word oh, out yeah. there. And Absolutely. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll connect with all your little social media uh, platforms. And Perfect. I'm going to beam this up now. So I appreciate you taking the time yes. and uh, sharing this with my viewers. And uh, Thank you. Down the road, if you got something new, I'd like to stay in touch. Who knows? I my know. mind's I'm going right now with some ideas. Yeah. I've had some ideas I want to maybe. Yeah, that'd be great because I, I have a I have a book coming out, so um, I'd love oh, to talk. Come back on. Yeah, absolutely. What, yeah. What's your book? 
Oh, we don't well, we don't have a title yet. We don't have a title yet, but the book is actually talk, taking you through what I just talked about, that it goes right. from idea to market fit. How do you, you do that? You don't need a title yet. You still got to test it, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Okay, Camille, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>